Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome back to the Advanced Wars DS Hard Campaign Randomized Skills and COs playthrough. Uh, we've got two missions here today. One of them is very easy. One of them, uh, I'm not sure. Don't really remember it too much. It's this one right here. Tag Battle, the first ever Tag Battle mission. Well, the first to give the enemy two COs. We've definitely been using two COs this entire time. Let's start it up. This will actually conclude the first arc of the story, if you can call it that. Because uh, after we smash that crystal, they're all, Oh, hey, we smashed a crystal. We win, kind of? I don't know. All right, so this map also introduces the Pipe Runner for the first time. A very interesting unit. It runs on pipes. And it's got an overpowered cannon that can shoot anything. It's kind of annoying, especially since hard mode adds a Neo Tank to the in enemy HQ here. It seems to be a theme here. That's two maps now that have added Neo Tanks to enemy HQs. There's also some copters. There's more guards around this airport that I have to capture. Yeah, this might be interesting. So, let's see what COs we have to play with. <laughs> Not exactly looking forward to this roll. But I do like rolling. Rolling is fun. Alright, so... Uh, one of these is skills is going to be a debuff. Got a 1 on the black die. And the skills are going to be from levels 4, 3, and 2, 8. Interesting. The CO itself... Or himself or herself or whatever. I, I think we rolled number nine before. Let me see who it is. Ah, oh, it's Jess. We're playing Jess again. All right. So one of these has to be a penalty. So let's see, two eights, a three, and a four. Let me get rid of all of these first. Okay, three. Um, I think I'm gonna take. Oh, we could take a tag skill, but I think the best thing to take is what's this one? Ah, uh, extra counterattack damage, okay. I'm g just gonna take star power because that's the most, like, obvious choice to make. And, um... There's a couple of forests on this map, I suppose. Well, actually, I'll save that for the debuff, I think. So I'm gonna lower the enemy terrain stars because we're up against Lash. At least part of the time we are. And, um, air units know I want extra tank damage. We are playing as Jess. So extra tank damage seems like the obvious thing to do. Just stack all of her uh, regular powers on top of her uh, skills. And for the debuff... Oh, hey, we can take... Oops, I uh, overwrote my level 3 skill. Um, I hate doing that by accident. Right, so what skill did I pick? Star power, right? There we go. I'm kind of metagaming again because I took the negative C attack skill on a map where you're obviously not going to be using C at all. Alright, so CO number two. It would be nice if I... Oops. Drop, drop the dice. It would be nice if I rolled Javier again, because then we would have a tag uh, uh, power boost. Like, um, if you've got two COs with those compatibility stars on their dossier, you do get a luck boost. So, let's see if... Get out there. Oh, this is interesting. I've rolled very high on the green dice. This is a 19, and this is an 8, so it's number 27. <laughs> that is 27 total, right? I hope I'm not getting my math wrong. Oh, no! <laughs> I looked at my list. Guess who it is? Rachel! Oh, uh, we're shooting down the missiles today! No debuffs on Rachel. Wow, I just flubbed the pronunciation of her name right there. Rachel. Ray Chill. Ch uh, she chills. <laughs> Alright, so I'm excited. I'm excited to finally be able to use Rachel. I should have I gotten an overpowered CO a long, long time ago. So, two level one skills. Um, let's take... I'm going to take both of the direct combat boosts. And none of these have to be uh, penalties. So, um, level five now. Um, well, nothing weather-related really helps. So, I think I'm going to take... Forests aren't really a big thing on this map either. I think I'm going to take Prairie Dog because um, recons might 
come in handy here. Uh, for those who don't know, Prairie Dog makes all of your planes movement equal to one. So it basically means that tires, uh, well, recons, rockets, and missiles don't suffer any penalties on planes when they move. So that's kind of nice. And we have one for level nine. It's going to be... Well, 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 whatever it is should go really well with Rachel's super. Well, I think I'm just going to take Speed Demon, which, as we've established, is Adder's plus one move and plus two move during powers and superpowers, respectively. The rest of these are just... What, what are the rest of these? Oh, they cause weather effects! Okay, so, actually, this would... You know, I'm going to change my mind here. Um... Let's cause snow, because we have Jess, so we can uh, refuel our um, units. Uh, you don't need to worry about fuel as long as you have Jess, and in Advanced Wars DS, um, it is snow that causes you to use up more fuel. So we're going to take the plus attack power in snow skill along with the skill that causes snow during a super. So this is going to synergize really well, I think. So yeah, this is a very interesting setup we've got here. I will just write it down and then we will be on with the mission. I'll be right back. Well, I have a feeling this is going to be a tough one, but let's see how it plays out. I am ready to get started. Mission 8, Tag Battle. This is going to be fun. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get to this airport, I think, as quickly as possible. The pipe runner is covering both of these bases, so there's no like immediate need to go after them. And don't you just love this? I did not notice this until I started the mission, but the placement of this artillery is really, really devious because it's covering uh, the possibility that you might attack the pipe runner direct directly. Alright, so I can safely well can I see if we capture those? There's a recon there. Oh well. Um, first I have to capture the properties around my HQ, first and foremost. So yes, we'll avoid attacking the Pipe Runner for now, and try to go around capturing this base, and then this airport, and then we'll swing around to this area. Hopefully that should work out. I'll just take two infantry, and uh, moving on. Not a lot of money on Black Hole's side at this moment. But they are switching to Lash right away, which is interesting. Because, um... I have that skill that reduces the enemy terrain stars, which means Lash's power is rendered mostly helpless. She's not completely useless, but she is going to be working with a disadvantage here. Oh, I'm tank first. I didn't want to do that. I want to block off the anti-air here. Uh, th um, that could damage my anti-air a little bit, which is bad. It'll give me a disadvantage against the copter, but whatever. Definitely gonna need a little bit of money. I suppose a backup anti-air is not a bad idea. And they're going for the- Oh, the copter actually went for the anti-air! That is a very odd decision. Well, we can uh, just grab some properties here. That actually does throw a wretch into my ideas for a little while, because now I don't ha really... Well, I, I suppose I'll eventually win against the copter anyways, but it's going to delay capturing that base for just a little bit more. Alright. I'm gonna build some mechs here. Jess, yeah, I have to do this in order to fight off the tank from my HQ. It's, n it's not gonna help against the copter, but whatever. Um, I will just send the anti-air back over there after the tank is dealt with. Worth noting that Jess does not have an infantry or foot soldier penalty in Advanced Wars DS. Uh, or at least I think they don't. Let me actually check. Because they may have just made it not as big a penalty? No, see, there's no penalty at all for her infantry units. That's uh, something that annoyed people when using her in Advanced Wars 2. Luckily, we do not have to deal with that anymore. Go ahead and capture that. Actually, fire with a full HP mech first. 
Gonna lose a little bit of money here. Oh, and, uh, oh, the Pipe Runner is actually not, um, in range of my mech. Uh, it's one space smaller than I thought it was. I guess if you were playing Grid, it would have a much bigger range. Alright, so Black Hole is going for that base down here. They've built nothing but infantry for the first couple of rounds. So let's see here. What do we... What do we do? We can't really get close to that Neotank unless we, like, drag it away by luring it up to the top or something. Because it's not going to move unless I get in there first. So I guess we'll save up some cash for when we have that airport. We might as well save up for a bomber, I don't imagine... <laughs> well, I, I said that, and then the enemy immediately built a anti-air. And so, so far this is not stupidly hard, but it is... It really isn't, um... Like, they're, they're not gonna go down without a fight. That's how I see it, for now. So I will just sit there and repair the anti-air. It's gonna cost me a little bit of money. I'll try and get some back by joining here. And then building some infantry anyways, because, I don't know, I guess I wanted a refund that badly. Um... <clears throat> feels like I should do something about that anti-air, but I don't know how I would get to it quite yet. I'm gonna switch to Rachel. And the reason for that is I want her power meter to start building up for an eventual dual strike. Uh-oh, um, the enemy might go for the uh, middle base, but the Pipe Runner has actually moved off to the left a little bit, so this could help out. Yeah, it's trying to avoid getting hit directly, even though there's an artillery covering it. So that's actually a good thing. I can capture this, um, city now, and I can't capture that base without getting into Pipe Runner range, but I can stop the enemy from getting to it first. That's a good thing. Oh yeah, and I forgot about Rachel's ability to repair three hit points in one turn. So that will actually let the anti-air get back into the fray faster, so that switch was a good idea. Does this tile count as a river? No, it counts as a sea. You know, actually, I think in Advance Wars 2, this little waterfall tile would have counted as a river, which would have been really weird because you could actually have your infantry move on the shoal and then go on to this river. It would, it would just look really weird. That's all I needed to, that's all I wanted to point out. Alright, so... Ah, I think I'm... We, we do have access to everything, including our own Neotanks now, so I think some artillery are going to be in order. And, um... Yeah, I'll, um, save up... I'll save up money like I was intending, but I'm also going to build up a small artillery force to eventually take on the... Oh, the pipe runners back in place, never mind. Oh, but if it's back in place, I could actually attack it, but... Wow, this is actually a surprisingly smart move. But I have to attack the base. I don't want Black Hole getting that base at all. So, uh, it's uh, your choice, Black Hole. Either attack the anti-air or attack the artillery that's going to shoot you on the next turn. <laughs> I guess that's one way to deal with the Pipe Runner. Just uh, throw in a bunch of... Like, throw in a small artillery battery. Uh, maybe that's actually for the best. I think I'll take I'll take them out that way instead. Like I'm still gonna go for the airport, but it looks like having some artillery over here is not a bad idea. Always a chance to have that tank come around from the back as well. All right, so it went for the anti-air. That's good. And they've switched back to Jugger. Which means we get to deal with some luck rolls. Alright, so now that the pipe runner is crippled... Oh, jeez, there's a enemy on this base, too. Uh, okay. What do we do about that? I guess we just throw all of our units at it and see what happens. It's usually the best way to accomplish something in Advanced Wars, right? No, not really. Take the 
artillery over here, and this tank is not really doing that much. I think it should come back up. Now we've got to save up a little bit of money, though, because we're almost ready for um, our air units. Oh, the infantry actually attacked instead of capturing. See, yeah, I'm so used to Advance Wars 2's stupid AI. Now I'm playing Advance Wars DS, and uh, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit, but I'll be okay. Alright, so we're almost ready for a dual strike, but so is the enemy. So, we really, really want to get our dual strike first. That's very important. Because, you know, it's one thing to have to suffer an enemy's dual strike, but if you get your own first, that's pretty... That's, um... That's not so bad. And now we have it, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. Like, if, if they got their dual strike first, it would just cripple me, so I really don't want to see that happen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this right away. No special bonuses for the combination of COs, but Rachel, as you know, her superpower is to just drop three missiles on the enemy forces, and that is actually not very effective at all. It went for the infantry, which is, you know, they're not that valuable at this moment, I would say. But due to the skills we picked, we now have snow, and we now have a firepower boost from the other skill that we picked, not really a huge boost, but it'll do. Yeah, I really should have gone with a movement boost like I thought, but oh well. And Snow in Advance Wars DS, as I've said, it causes you to use up fuel faster, so this tank is almost out of fuel, actually. What should I get here? Jess's power is going to give us plus two moves, so I want to... I maybe want to build something big. Something like a Neo Tank? <laughs> a Jess Neo Tank is a monster. You've got to really. You've got to really come up with a plan if you want to take down a Jess Neo Tank. I know that very well because in one of the War Room maps, uh, it's Twin Isle, and in that map, Jess gets a Neo Tank on day three. <laughs> it's really awful. Of course, we have a very big firepower boost to her tank units, as well as the big movement boost, so this is really, really good. We can actually capture this base now. Um, this artillery is going to be a problem, because it's because it's still going to stop us from capturing, I think, but it's still better to block off that base than to just let the enemy do what they want with it. Right, so now we can... what can we do here? The near tank is... You know, there's going to be an enemy dual strike coming up, so you know, maybe I should try and block a little bit. Yeah, that sounds alright. This is going to be a very dangerous dual strike. Actually, Lash doesn't... well, Lash and Jugger don't have a lot of money to them because of all that repairing that the Rachel missiles are forcing them to do, so that's... You know, they can't really build any more units on top of what they've already got. And most of their units are actually crippled, so, um... Yeah, they're suiciding the infantry. Oh, and they actually have enough movement to get there with the Neo-Tank? Well, they're not going to stop the infantry from capturing the base, so I'd say we've got this in the bag. Looks alright so far. Oh, they were actually able to attack it, but that's fine. It's still gonna take... Um, I'm still gonna have it in two turns. So move you back, and... Start... Oh, they didn't even build anything here, that's really weird. Were they out of money? Oh, they must have built a mech and ran out of money. How nice. Alright, so this should take care of the Neo Tank. Wow, it actually destroyed it. That is one impressive. Like, Jess is just a crazy CO to play as. Very powerful. Kind of up for debate whether she's better than Max, but, um, yeah, I guess in a ground battle, she's obviously very much better. Max in Advance Wars DS, I didn't mention this, but they actually really kind of changed him a lot. Because, um, they took away the movement boost from his superpowers, but they, um,. They increased his direct combat damage even further. 
So I guess it's a bit of a trade-off. I mean, he could still be good. I think he's still high in the tier list. But you know, it's kind of a shame to lose the movement boost. I guess they wanted to make Jess a little bit more unique. Alright, so we've got... We've got the base in the center, so this pretty much is... It's not totally over, but... And they just don't have a lot of money, it seems. They're putting all of their money into... Wow! I'm one-shotting a Lash tank on a base with a Neo tank. Jess, you are OP. Alright, so I guess we're routing this. I don't see any other reason to play this any other way than to route it. I mean, we've got so much power. Let's build a bomber. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, Jess's air units are weaker than most, but not that much weaker. Alright, so this wasn't that hard after all. Though that's mostly due to the combination of COs. Like, you can still get away with quite a lot. This is just going to be another one-shot, Lash. Don't spend all your money on a tank that's going to get one shot. Like, your other fronts need help, too. Okay, go ahead and fire at that. Wow, how embarrassing for these two, and I know that Mission 9 is going to be really, really easy as well. Because, um, just because of the gimmick that they put in place, and I'll explain that when I get to it. So this should be the last turn. It went on the base in order to recover its health. Okay, I guess the Advance Wars DS AI is not that much stronger than Advance Wars 2, but a little stronger. That's the first... Well, that's not the first mission we've won by route, but I was expecting the HQ cap. Yeah, a bomber won't do it in one turn, but a Neo tank certainly will. So that's mission 8. Wow. Did I get a perfect 300? I was not expecting a perfect 300. But I guess the dice have been kind. Alright, so that's two times we've seen Jess and we got to we got to take a crack at Rachel. And now we're moving on to Victory or Death, a very a very epic sounding mission name, but this is really not the uh hardest mission in the world because it is the first dual screen map this is going to be the first this is our introduction to the other advanced wars ds gimmick it is a double screen map you're playing two games of advanced wars at once on the top screen what you have to do is well the ai is going to be controlling the top screen entirely but um the top screen actually doesn't really matter that much because you can see that we have some pre-deployed bombers and fighters. The idea here was that you would send these to the top screen, but honestly, two free bombers, two free fighters, why don't we just use them on the bottom screen? Our objective is to destroy that crystal and that's very easy to do with a dual strike. You just gotta make sure the fighter is out of the way and you're basically set. But I will roll COs and such anyways because you know, maybe that'll make things interesting for us. And I'm not going to forget the black die this time. Alright, let's see who it is. Get out there. They get stuck in the cup so often. Alright, so three penalties. Oh, uh, that might be dangerous. We've got level 0, level 6, level 3, and level 4. And the CO of our choosing is number 21. So who is number 21? Number 21 is Max again. Oh, it's actually important to be careful who you pick in this map because one of them is going to be on the top screen and you actually can't swap between them. So um, this will be interesting. I'm going to say that I can put Max on the top screen if I want to, but we'll see what I roll. So only one of these is allowed to be a boost, and I'm going to assume I want Max on the top screen. So, let me get rid of all of these first. Only one of these is a positive skill, so we'll make it, um... I guess star power again. We got a 0 and a 6, so a 6 isn't useful on the top screen at all. 
base repairs, capturing, vision, those don't matter at all on the top screen. But I've got a zero. So, um, yeah, just make it star power, I guess. Boring, but practical. As for our other skills, I can only pick penalties, so I've picked level three. Um, I actually have to pick a zero here. Uh, I could take... Oh wait, that's cannon guard? Don't you mean... Th these are the... These are the skill penalties, so this should be, like, damage from cannons plus two? I'm not gonna pick that either way. Um, or is it damage from your own silos and cannons? I don't know, I guess I'll just pick this, because it doesn't really affect the map anyways. Four and six. Well, there's no C up there, and there's no vision up there. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's roll the other CO. Maybe it'll be something even worse. Because I want to say I don't care about the top screen, but as long as the top screen CO stays alive, it like if you win on the top screen, then you're allowed to use dual strikes because the second CO will join you on the bottom front. So I do kind of care about survival. Um, this is a four, it means nothing. Level 3, level 2, 2 from level 2, and level 1. 1, 2, 2, 3. And the CO number is 13. I think that's visible. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Number 13. Unlucky number 13 is, well, it's Jugger again. Huh. He's. Maybe I'll keep him on the top screen. What skills would he get? Uh, oh wait, these are penalties. Yes, here are the positives. So... I think I'm gonna need a direct combat boost, and I will take direct combat defense, that'll help with the fighter, and... Yeah, I'll increase my defense even further in exchange for slow CO power speed, because Jugger has an awful CO power. But I could take, um... You know, I could take uh, star power and cancel it out completely, right? Actually, no. I'm going to take this the skill that increases your partner's defense, because I definitely think Max is going to be on the top screen now. So go ahead and switch them. That skill that I picked will give Max a defense boost instead of Jugger. That's a really interesting thing you can do. That's one of the few interesting points about dual screen maps, but I really don't like the gimmick at all because... You know, I could just ignore the top screen completely. All the top screen does is that as long as that flying fortress is in play, it's going to drop missiles on this base, which means the base is effectively rendered useless. But who cares? I have bombers. Just flying a bomber to this, like, this target right here. Alright, so enough of my complaining. I'm going to input all of this onto the screen for you. So I'll be right back. You know, I just realized another problem with this map. It is the map that introduces us to sandstorms. What a sandstorm does is it reduces the range of indirect attacks. So these missiles that are supposed to guard the crystal from bombers, they're actually crippled as well. They can't do anything. So isn't this just the most brilliantly designed map? Of course, I haven't started playing it yet, so it might be a little bit more difficult considering the CO loadout. But we'll see, because, you know, maybe it'll be more difficult, but I kind of doubt it. Alright, so let's see what this anti-air can do. Not a whole lot. There's no anti-air forces except for the fighter. So I'll move to that T-air section. I gotta be careful not to accidentally pick send, because that would send the unit up to the top screen. You can only do that with planes for this map. So... Gonna move forward, capture these cities so I have some backup funding. And uh, let's see how it goes for Max up on the top screen. Oh, yeah, and that crystal, it also refuels units within two spaces and gives them plus two HP. Yada, yada, yada. That doesn't really matter. I guess it stacks well with those cities if they manage to capture it, but it's like. It's, um. 
it's such a small area to cover. All right, so Max is going to be focused on taking down those cannons. Maybe he'll manage it. Oh, but he did just waltz right into cannon range. I forgot those were mini cannons. So yeah, he's basically going to get destroyed. Actually, that's my fault because... Oh, and there's a black bomb up there as well. That's my fault because I forgot that you can change the AI's... Um, not in this screen, but in the Intel screen for some reason. In the Intel menu, you can change... Yeah, you can change the AI to however, however you want them to play. It should have been set to defense by default. It doesn't really matter anyways. I guess Max is just done up there now. I should have... Uh, like, the AI should really be smart enough not to just walk right into cannon range regardless, if you ask me. So, can I actually attack that fighter? No, I can't. It's gonna be tricky. I guess I have to go around the bottom of the area, which is probably the best plan anyways. Let's go here. I do need to actually pull in the fighter, though. You have to kind of lure it in if you want to be able to strike at it. Um, or maybe it'll just fly off to the left and I don't have to worry about it. Let's see, what is its range again? Mm, I think I'm going to make a sacrifice. Sorry, Battlecopter, but you're going to lure the fighter right into my anti-air range. Maybe I should send those fighters up to the top screen. What happens if... Wait. They put Lash on the top screen. Where there's no terrain and no ground units whatsoever. So, this is actually a strategically worse decision than the Lash with a Navy map. Like, wow. Black Hole? was really off its game in this in this release. Like, in this story, I guess. Haha, <laughs> Max is, Max is uh, living on a 1 HP uh, fighter. Well then. <laughs> Alright, so the fighter is safely destroyed. Good night. Now my bombers do not have to worry at all. Uh, what is there? Wait, whoops. Actually, I'm going to switch to displaying the unit info because I need the unit info. So, seven spaces. So, we need to be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Well, the anti-air might decide to play dirty with us, but... I guess if I move like this... Like, um... I can always block with the fighters. Well, I'm not going to be able to block with the fighters because, um... Let's see here. Oh yeah, I guess star power was useless because it looks like CO powers just don't do anything on the top screen. Um... I might be in trouble here, actually, because Cole is going to get his super and if Lash finishes off Max, they might have a dual strike. Oh boy. Well, we'll see how it goes. Oh, he's like, oh, uh, yeah, he gets the super before the dual strike can happen. Okay. I'm a little more confident. So if he decides to go for the fighters... Then he went for the bomber, and he goes for that, that fighter. He goes for that fighter as well. Uh-oh. Um... Oh, uh, <laughs> well, he just left the crystal exposed, ladies and gentlemen. Huh. Oh, yeah, you've probably never seen this dialogue before. But, you know, it's just a short, hey, you lost dialogue. Okay, so, um, well, they left the crystal exposed, so one shot, boom, I win. Like, can you believe that? Nice AI, you're supposed to guard the crystal. It didn't account for the possibility that you could, that I could shoot it down in one hit, now did ya? 
So, all of that, and you still lost. You know, I thought I was going to have to retry that map, but as you can see, Jugger Superior. Enemy Lame. Yes, very much so. So yes, you can see why that map is uh, very much broken on both difficulties. Like, you could do the same thing on normal mode. <laughs> ah. Well, that was fun. We had a map that I thought was going to be... You know, I didn't know what tag battle was going to be like, but victory or, or death, very, very easy. Oh, look at this. Why do they show us this? It's not like... The campaign's just getting started, people. Now we have a Kindle map to worry about, and it's just one enemy CO. Oh, my God. Well, we'll deal with that next time. Next time on this playthrough, we get into another Navy mission. A bunch of other stuff could potentially happen, too. But we'll see how that goes. I'll see you later, everybody.